My name is Michelle Bolo. I'm a candidate for Councillor Municipal Councillor for Ward 5. I'm born and raised in Timmins, so I'm originally from here. I um, did my school at Ecole Secondaire Catholique de Thierryau. Um, afterwards, I went down to Ottawa to complete a Bachelor's in Second Language Teaching, specialized to teach French in Second Language, so I went to the University of Ottawa. From there, I traveled a little bit all over the world through the Americas, Europe. Um, after a while, OSAP wanted me to start paying back my student loans, so I moved back in with mom and dad, and I came back to Timmins. I'll be the first to admit that I came back kicking and screaming a little bit. I never thought I would end up back in Timmins after I went away for studies. And since I've been back, I think it's been the best decision I've ever made to stay here. Um, as soon as I got back, I was presented with so many professional opportunities that, um, well, I happen to know that you know my friends, my peers weren't, weren't um, getting um, in bigger cities in Toronto and Vancouver and whatnot. So uh, it's been a wonderful place to live as a young professional. You know, I'm, I'm at a point in my life now where I'm, I've been working on my career and my husband and I are deciding where we want to settle down and, you know, we've been, we've been talking about making tenants our forever home. And so I figure if it's going to be my forever home, I might as well, you know, do what I can to work towards um, making it the ideal home, the place I, 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 I'd like to raise my family in. Since I've been back in Timmins, I, uh, I've mostly been working in post-secondary education. I've been working for, I worked for Kadesh Bakia for the last seven years. Uh, I started working at their employment services, so I worked downtown, I worked in the, uh, the municipal library building at the employment center there. Um, and then I moved over to the campus here in Timmins. I worked as a, a liaison officer, so I was a, arts and recruitment, and I was responsible for recruitment throughout Northern Ontario. Um, I've been very fortunate in my career um, so far in, in, in Timmins to uh, hold regional positions um, which have permitted me to travel throughout Northern Ontario and really get a good sense of what the realities are in you know, our smaller communities here and the importance of regional collaboration. Um, I think that if we, you know, if we really um, work at establishing good relationships with our, our, our regional communities, communities that are, are close to Timmins, we can thrive as a, a hub, you know, for Northeastern Ontario. My work in recruitment, um, so I did recruitment, I was student recruitment. Um, one of the things that helped make me good in my job was being in touch with um, the, the local and regional labor markets and, um, uh, you know, what's really in demand, what's going to be in demand, uh, you know, trends and our projections for, for the local, uh, sorry, local labor market. Um, I think that that would help me um, in my role as municipal councillor if I were to be elected um, because I have a good idea of what's going on um, in the in tenants, what's going on in the region. Um, I have a good sense of the economic environment, the current economic environment um, in the region. So I think that that knowledge would be very handy as well on council. I've been working very closely with with our community, with the people that live here, with the people that choose to come here to study. Make it so that Timmins is welcoming for these people that are coming, whether it be for schooling and training, and whether it be for, uh, for work, for healthcare, um, that it's, it's a welcoming city, that they recognize their culture, they see their language, that, you know, they're hearing their language, they can be served in their language. Um, I think that that could only make for a better Timmins. The, the, the richness that diversity can bring to a city is just, um, well, it's inspiring if you ask me. I think that we should be um, a driving force in environmental conservation in Northern Ontario. Um, we are a city, you know, we are, um, we are using a good portion of the land, a good piece of the land, and I think that what we do with it and how we treat it, um, we could lead, we could be leaders. I think that we should ensure that there are policies in place um, to make sure that when businesses do come to Timmins and when industry does come to Timmins, that they are expected to meet a certain environmental standard. I think that we should put pen to paper and, and, and make that you know, set standards. We talk so much about the beauties of Northern Ontario and Timmins and how beautiful it is where we live, and that is part of why we, we all love it and why we live here is because of the lakes and the forests, you know, the fact that you could just, you know, drive five minutes from home and go hunting down a trail and, um, and you know, we've got our, our fly-in fishing spots and our secret fishing spots and that's what makes, you know, Timmins so appealing to people. 
Um, if that's what's really most attractive about our city, I think that's what we need to be protecting. Like we have to be making sure that um, that we're protecting it. And if we do expand, and when we do expand, let's make it when and not if. And as it grows, that we're growing in a in an environmentally sane way. Make it a goal that that you know environmental strategies. Um, are what we're, we're going to follow moving forward. I just want to say that I hope that it won't be the only issue that voters, you know, base their vote on. Um, it is a very good, important issue that we do need to be talking about. Decisions were made, money was lost. I just hope that we're going to look beyond that when we're making our decisions. That being said, I do realize that voters do want to know where we're to stand on this. And so I will say that I strongly believe that more concerts and more festivals in the city can only make for a better city, okay? Um, I do believe that Stars and Thunder was an excellent concept. There was a lot that could be done with that. I come from a, a marketing background, and so when I think of Stars and Thunder as the concept and what it could do for a city and for tourism, it's awesome. I think that if it were to continue to exist, it would have to be replanned, reassessed, restructured. I don't think it can exist in its actual format. And I think that's been, you know, agreed on by all. Um, the duration, you know, time of year, it all has to be replanned. Should a city be organizing it? Should a city and its taxpayers be paying for it? My answer to that is if the taxpayers are asking for such a concert, and if they're asking for the city to put it on, then yes. It seems that that's not the case. We do want more concerts. We don't necessarily want the city to be the one organizing you know, and, and, and putting it on. Um, and they don't want to be paying for it. Now, you know, I, I think that whether or not it should be coming from the tax base, should that decision should come from the tax base. Um, so definitely, I think we should keep trying on that we should try to keep um, our stars and thunder or the concept of it, you know, keep it living on. I think that maybe, you know, it, it should go on to a third party, to a you know, committee, um, organization. We have grassroots organizations that are doing excellent work at that level. Um, and so, again, I think it should only have a positive impact on our tax base. If we were to have this type of event, um, it should only have a positive uh, impact. Um, so that being said, let's let's you know go back to the drawing board because uh, we should definitely, and as a council, we should definitely be encouraging more concerts and festivals and recreation and arts um, in the city. As a city. We should be making sure that these are happening um, and doing what we can to support them. And so if that means that we don't have the capacities to be putting on a concert, let's do what we can to support the grassroots organizations and the groups that do have those capacities. Let's support them in ways like um, perhaps offering some money, perhaps uh, you know making things like permitting easier, um, you know, uh, coordinating volunteer efforts, uh, things like that. So there's different ways that we can be supporting these kinds of festivals and concerts and, and, and events without, you know, being the ones to actually put them on. I was looking at the, the, the 2018 budget that's the last council put together and uh, it's it's slim, like it's not a big budget, right? And so like you're saying, we have to be proactive in, in looking for the money and applying to higher levels of governments for that money. I also know that, you know, especially at the provincial level, um, they're they're essentially working off checklists. They are looking for the applications that are going to check off the most boxes um, in terms of what they are trying to do, what their mandate is, and, and, and what they campaign on, essentially. And so uh, it's it's having a good sense of what it is that what are the priorities of the other levels of government, um, and then being able to align ourselves with that. And that's something I do in our everyday work. There are a lot of things that have been. Um, put on to municipalities um, that I believe all, you know, shouldn't be entirely on municipalities to pay for or, or to ensure. Um, there are things that um, it's also up to our other levels of government, it's their responsibility as well, the province and, and, and the country to, to ensure down to the municipal level and so we have to be aware of what's also within their mandates and their roles and then make sure that we're we're tapping into that and we're, we're asking them for it, right? I've been 
running on the idea that retaining our current population and attracting more people to attendance should be our top priority as a city council. Retention and recruitment, right? Um, of course, post-secondary education could be a great steam engine for that. Uh, and we see it. We see it in neighboring cities, right? Our university towns, our college towns, and, and what that brings to a city. Well, I don't know if bringing in another institution that would compete with what's already here and that would have to compete with some of those bigger machines that are, you know, their colleges and universities down in southern Ontario, I don't know if that would be the best idea and the best approach. Um, I did read the Northern Policy Institute's um, publication, you know, and, and their recommendations, and, and they recommend perhaps more of these Northern Algoma type um, uh, partnerships where the university offers you know, uh, university programming um, you know, uh, in partnership with the college. Um, and, you know, in turn that minimizes the need for facilities, um, and that's, that's the way colleges and universities are going it throughout the province. It's partnership, it's bridging agreements, right? Um, so I think that, that model is probably the best way to go. Um, the partnership and, and, and joint delivery. Like I said, we have excellent options here. We have beautiful facilities. Um, in my opinion, they're being underutilized. Uh, it's hard, we have a declining demographic. We need to be able to attract students. I personally, that was my like you know challenge for the last few years was trying to encourage people to come to tenants. Some of the issues we're facing is housing. Um, we talk about affordable housing, and for the people that are living here, if we want to attract more people here to come and study and come and work, that's a main issue right now. And I've actually talked to parents in other communities who have told me that they were going to encourage their child to go to Sudbury to one of our other campuses, right, because there was a residence there. And because even though they knew Timmins, this is where they came to play hockey on the weekends, this is where they came shopping, this is where they came for entertainment because they live in Cochrane or Matheson or Capscasing, they know Timmins so well, they would still prefer to see their kid go even further, another three hours further, because they know that they would be safe in a residence that's affordable, that's secure, that's close to the campus and whatnot. So I think that housing, um, you know, suitable housing for students, which should definitely be a priority um, in our city as well. Um, whether that, you know, be from public or private sector, I think private sector has a role to play in these kind of things as well. From the get-go, since I put my name in, I've been making it quite clear. I'm not putting my name in because I think that Timmins is screwed up and we need to we need to clean everything up and fix it. I think that Timmins is doing great and I just want to kind of build on that momentum. Like since I've been here, I've been just so impressed with some of the initiatives, you know, that are coming forth and, and it's happening, right? So we do, we have that, there's somewhat of a movement happening here and I just want to build on that momentum. I don't, I want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Obviously we know that we have a declining population in the area uh, and one of the, the, the only solutions right now that are actually foreseeable is, is that it's immigration, is encouraging immigrants to settle in tenants, um, is working with agencies and organizations in southern, uh, you know, southern parts of the province um, to recruit, you know, up to northern Ontario. I've had a lot of opportunities to um, talk to newcomers to tenants, and I think that if everybody in tenants saw tenants the way a newcomer sees it, we would be happier people, <laughs> you know, they talk about the quality, like about the space that they have up here and the, the air and the activities and um, you know the outdoors and so we really do have a gem here. Other people see it and recognize it and I think that we really have to work to do that too. If we want to be seen and taken seriously as a city, we have, have to have a vibrant downtown core. Um, and so definitely there's the, you know, the idea of the beautification. I, I think we're doing a good job. You know, the flowers are beautiful downtown and the reefs and the lights at, in the winter time. So we definitely have to keep doing that. Um, but more green spaces would definitely be um, an asset to the downtown area. Um, when we have the urban parks during the summer, um, I've had the opportunity to participate again in, in my job and do recruitment and stuff. And so, you know, the idea is be where the people are. And those urban parks do bring people out downtown, so I think that's great. Um, maybe we should look at having, you know, 
it's different seasonal type of marketplaces downtown, you know, winter marketplaces. If we had more green spaces, I'm sure that they would be used year-round as well, right? Um, if we had the spaces for people to be serving, imagine in the winter, you know, you have your hot apple cider or you have your, like, maple syrup on on, on snow, and that would be a reason to bring, bring your kids downtown and go visit the downtown. I know that one of the big issues in talking to business owners downtown, one of the big issues is parking. Um, solutions in the past has been to when a building ends up being taken down, burns down or something, uh, we end up putting in parking. We've got all these random parking spots that no one can find. No one knows whether they're private or public, uh, for one. Um, and they're just, they don't look welcoming. And so I think that if we do want to follow the track that yes, we do have enough parking downtown, then we have to be working on more directional signage, uh, having it clearer that this is public parking. Things like shared parking, we should be encouraging shared parking. Um, there are a lot of businesses that have their own parking lots, um, but they're only occupied during the day because business, business hours are only open during the day. Maybe we should have you know, shared parking where that parking becomes available to um, businesses that are open after hours or simply downtown BIA parking for after hours parking. In terms of revitalizing downtown, one strategy we can take is a, um, a branded entertainment district. Um, Again, I like to think of Timmins as being the major city in Northern Ontario. I've traveled throughout Northern Ontario and I know that people come to Timmins for their shopping, for their entertainment needs, uh, to go to Boston Pizza, to go to Wacky Wings, um, to go to the movies. Um, and so I think that if we had an entertainment district and we worked closely with the tourism industry, with tourists in Timmins perhaps, um, we can attract people downtown again after hours. We're always talking about how after hours it's dead and, and you feel unsafe. And I felt the safest in different parts of the world after hours in downtown, but communal kind of, you know, shared spaces, essential parks. Um, that I, I felt safer there in, in South America than I have in our downtown area after hours sometimes. So that's saying something, but if you have the people and you have the lighting and you have, you, you have the venues that are open, um, then I think that people would, would want to go down this town. And so this idea of a branded um, entertainment district, I think is a, is a strong one. I think that we could do a little bit of marketing work on that. When you think of places like the Byron Market in Ottawa, I remember when I lived in Ottawa, when we were going out and you called your friends, where are you going? I'm going to the market. I'm going to the Byron Market. We never said what bar we're going to, what restaurant we're going to. It was to the market. Once you got there, you're reunited with friends, you ran into people you know, and you decided where you're going from there on. You know, and it's beautiful. We've got our food trucks happening now, and, and they could be in the downtown after hours where the bars are. It's one of the reasons why I'm running was to bring that idea of all perspectives and all voices heard around the table. Um, because often, I think what happens is we're making these big decisions that impact a lot of people, but we're not always considering how everyone, all the different groups, are being impacted by these decisions. I just want to make sure that when we're making decisions and when we're having these debates and these discussions, that we're considering all of the different perspectives. Um, and of course, it's impossible to please everyone or to answer everyone's, you know, meet everyone's needs and stuff. But I just want to make sure that we at least considered it. That we at least said, oh wait, what kind of impact will this have on people living, um, you know, below the poverty line? Or what kind of impact will this have on just the people living in the general vicinity of where this event is taking place? And just kind of always considering those, all those perspectives before we make the final decision. So I think that's one of the most important things. Facebook has been an excellent outlet to hear from, hear from voters um, and to engage. I've received so many questions through Facebook and, and it's, it's an easy way for me to answer back and whether it be a quick little answer and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll elaborate later once I have a chance, I can do that from my phone. So I think that social media is a great way to engage with with our residents, um, um, and I know that we say that not you know not everyone's on social media. The seniors aren't, and I understand that not all seniors are. But my 89 year old grandfather is has an iPad and he's on Facebook, and this is how he keeps track of his granddaughters and stuff. And so maybe we can't do everything on the internet, right? But I think that in terms of just that basic getting the message across and communications, um, everyone is, is has this, you know. A good understanding of how that could happen. I, I've been loving how much civic engagement, engagement we've been seeing and just this, especially this past term um, in terms of participation at City Council. I'm so happy that we're streaming the, the council meetings now, you know, so I, I, I watch those myself 
Uh, so I think that just finding these new innovative ways to connect with the residents and for the residents to feel like they're involved in the decision making. There's so much potential here. The potential that Timmins presents is just, it's, it's exciting, it really is. Um, so I think that moving forward, if we take that mentality, you know, and really strategize to, to do it in a, a socially responsible way, in an environmentally responsible way, then we could truly be a leader, you know, in, as a, a city in Northern Ontario. I'm often told that I'm a leader. I've always been involved in politics, whether it be with on student council ever since, you know, I was in elementary school up until being uh, prime minister on student council at, uh, in high school. So very much in tune with what is going on in terms of, of the political sphere. Um, like I said, I'm very much aware of what uh, our local our local labor market, regional labor market uh, uh, demands and realities are and trends are. And I think that's very important when it's going to come to trying to attract, attract industry and attract investors to our city. I have an openness to people. I, uh, I'm often told that that I, you know I'm easy to talk to, I'm understanding, I'm open. And I think that that's something that I will bring to you to council is that that open-mindedness. Um, but then I also bring a sense of, of rationalization. Like I said, I, I you know masters of research, so I am going to question things. I'm going to want to know you know where the studies came from and and, and who funded them and, and why they're being done because that's what I was trained to do. And so. Um, I think that with my, my past experiences, my intercultural experiences, um, my, my work on the social level, um, and then that organizational and that, that analytical kind of you know, mindset um, would all just be you know, great assets to the table.